قرارداد نفت خود را با کنسرسیون در سال 1979 یعنی شش سال دیگر دیگر به هیچ وجه تمجید نکنه I can forgive those who try to kill me and even abduct my wife and my child, but not those who betray the country. In the new book, Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left and World Chaos, a Carter-Obama plan that will not work, author Mike Evans makes the case that Jimmy Carter's potential influence in the current debate over Middle East policy could have catastrophic results for the United States and the world. Evans calls Carter the godfather of world chaos because he says Carter created the firestorm that destabilized our greatest ally in the Muslim world, the Shah of Iran, in favor of the Ayatollah Khomeini. Evans traces the war in Iraq and the war on terror back to the policies of Jimmy Carter. And he warns if the Obama administration follows in Carter's footsteps, there will not be peace and Israel will be sacrificed. <laughs> From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, Tom Jarrell, and from Washington, Frank Reynolds. Good evening. Now we know the United States has passed the word to the Shah of Iran. It's time for him to leave his country. This is not being said publicly, but officials here in Washington are confirming it privately. Here's the story from diplomatic correspondent Barry Dunsmore. At the time that the Shah was meeting his new civilian government this past weekend, he was aware that the U.S. had made its decision. It was a subtle decision. The public signal that the U.S. had decided the Shah must go was actually given last Thursday by State Department spokesman Harding Carter, who indicated for the first time that the basic policy of the U.S. was not the continuation of the Shah's reign. The fundamental concerns of the United States and Iran are for that country's stability, independence, and orderly political and economic evolution. The shift in U.S. policy was dictated by the belief that a civilian government will have no chance unless the Shah leaves. Behind that belief is the concern that if a civilian government cannot be formed, there will either be a right-wing military coup or the emergence of an anti-Western, highly conservative Islamic state. As of the moment, either of those is still possible. Barry Dunsmore, ABC News, the State Department. I did criticize the president because of our undercutting of what was a stalwart ally, the Shah of Iran. And I am not at all convinced that he was that far uh, out of uh, line with his people or that they wanted that to happen. The Shah had done our bidding and carried our load in the Middle East uh, for quite some time. And I did think that it was a blot on our record that we let him down. President Jimmy Carter had a plan for peace in the Middle East, and it's a major focus for President Obama. But as we saw with Carter, Obama might not have the best approach. Mike Evans is a Mideast analyst and author of Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left and World Chaos, a Carter-Obama plan that will not work. And actually some of the foundations of Jimmy Carter's policies we're still dealing with today. First off, Mike, Jimmy Carter, a man of peace, he brought peace to the Middle East, didn't he? Anwar Sadat, Egypt and Israel aren't fighting. Shouldn't he be saluted? Sadat was assassinated because of Jimmy Carter. He funded the Muslim Brotherhood with $500 million and they became known as the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And that was uh, Zawahiri. Uh, it was exactly. one of the founders of the Muslim Brotherhood. Jimmy Carter said, makes no bones about it. He is not pro-Israeli. He is pro-Palestinian. Right. He, he, Jimmy Carter has an ideological belief system that, that Obama has to understand because if he plays that game, we're going to have hell to pay for it. He deposed the Shah of Iran. He conspired through a Guadeloupe summit to overthrow the Shah of Iran. The president of France told me he was a bastard of conscience. He showed up in Guadeloupe with the, with the French and the Germans and told us. And next thing you know, the Ayatollah Khomeini comes over from France, takes over, and nothing's been the same in that region. But how does that relate to Barack Obama? With terrorists and journalists. Peter Jennings was on the plane, Air France. How does it relate to Obama? Obama has an ideological worldview similar to Jimmy Carter. Talk to Iran. Talk to her enemies. Reason with these people. This is really, these are, see, Jimmy Carter re rejected preemption. He rejected the Nixon doctrine. By the way, he was elected on change and hope, and he ran against an unpopular president and an unpopular war. Watergate, Vietnam, Nixon. 
and the funding of what we now we know as Al Qaeda really started during the Carter years. Listen, when when Carter conspired to overthrow the Shah, and he succeeded, the Empress of Iran Farah told me when he succeeded, Brezhnev said, "If you do this, we will invade Afghanistan." They did the invasion. The Shah told his wife, I fear that horror will come upon the world if he does this because I fear that the Russians will invade Afghanistan and Saddam Hussein will invade us and the radical Islamics will become an epidemic. And they did. The dilemma that most people don't understand about Jimmy Carter, they say, what happened with 911? Why did we get into this mess? But what they don't understand, this man believed, he actually believed in these radical organizations as he does today. And he was funding Khomeini out of Paris through the CIA. He was supporting this operation through a man called Yazdi. He was getting him into power, working with the president of France, working with the German chancellor and the British. He was organizing, orchestrating a revolution that he thought was going to transform the world in Iran. It did. It did indeed. Most Americans don't know is that in 1976, President Jimmy Carter orchestrated the change of power in Iran that replaced the Shah of Iran with a government led by Ayatollah Khomeini. I tell the entire shocking story about this in my new book, Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left in World Chaos. I detail how a single decision made in the name of false hope changed the entire structure of the Muslim world and led to the establishment of the fanatical extremist movement that is responsible for terrorism around the world today. The former President of the United States supported the funding of an Islamic cleric who attempted to assassinate America's strongest Muslim ally, the Shah of Iran, and birth an Islamic revolution. Sums of $150 million were being periodically transferred to Paris into the Ayatollah Khomeini's bank account while he was in exile with the assistance of the CIA. Carter told world leaders at a summit meeting of his plan to overthrow the Shah of Iran and that Khomeini would be taking over and was a Gandhi-like figure. On April 1st of the following year, this Gandhi-like figure proclaimed the first day of the government of God in Iran. It was the birth of the Islamic Revolution. On Inauguration Day 1980 at 4.31 a.m., he secretly wire transferred $7.9 billion to buy the American hostages back after 144 days of humiliation. He could have planned all this, masterminded all this, set up all the organization. I know that one man alone could not have done it. This I know. I know that tremendous amount of money was spent. This also I know. I know that top uh, experts in propaganda were used to show us like tyrants, tyrants and monsters and the other side as uh, uh, democratic, liberal revolutionaries who wanted to uh, save the country. I know how mean uh, the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, had been towards us. This I know, because we have all the files. Were you surprised uh, how much freedom he had uh, to speak out in, uh, in France? Uh, in a way, yes. In another way, we thought that wherever he would be in Europe probably he would have had the same opportunities of speaking and the same staff would be around him because I don't think that he himself was planning the planning was done somewhere else where do you think the planning was done? well that's the question علامت سواله و اگر حقوق بشر همونطوری که گفتم برای آقای کارتر مطرح بود چطور شد موقع که شاه رفت دیگه ایرانی حقوق نداشت که اصلا هیچ وقت حرف نزد خب تمام این چیزها بود دیگه و فقط فکر نمی کنم که پریزیدنت کارتر ها رو به چه دلیلی ولی خب 
همه میدونن که اون موقع انگلیس بی بی سی شده بود بلنگوی آیت الله خمینی تمام نطقایشون رو به طرفیشون پیش از اینکه به گوش ایرانیا برسونه میرسون چرا اینقدر امکانات تبلیغاتی به